Welcome to this next episode of YouTube, where we're talking a little bit about testing and ritualized dominance, and these are things that go on in a wolf pack all the time, and we do see seasonal times when they get a little bit more intense. So I wanted to address uh, what we're witnessing. In this clip, you're actually seeing Luna go down into a subordinate posture, which is very rare. Luna rarely ever goes down in a subordinate posture, but um, one of the things that we watch for is, obviously, is this just a social engagement, or does this intensity increase to the point where it's more dominance related so the things that i look at is again tail wagging a full tail wag versus a tail wag at the end of the tail means something different a full tail wag is still pretty social but when a tail is held fairly stiff and just a wag at the end of the tail that usually means a little bit more intensity and a little bit more anxiety the other thing is the response from the wolf that's on the bottom if their tail is tucked if they're snapping if they're lunging um, that's something to be concerned about. Obviously, I'm concerned about Luna running here because um, I want to make sure that she's not overdoing herself, but she is Luna, and I can't really stop um, what Luna does. Here you see Luna dominating Denali. What's interesting about this clip, it, you clearly see Denali is not tolerating this as well. He's got a hackle response. He's got his tail tucked. He's uh, very much in a crouch kind of threat position, threat posture. But, of course, Aiden is actively involved in this. So the dynamics of which wolves are involved is part of that ritualized dominance. The dynamics of tail postures, uh, tuck tail versus high tails, how the tails are wagging, what the threat displays are, what the snapping kind of response is. And so those are all things that we have to watch. And so, like I say, ritualized dominance is always inherent in a wolf pack, but it seems to pick up as the fall season approaches. Now the wolves are getting their winter coats back and you can see a fairly good coat there on Denali. So some of these chasing scenes can make them pretty hot, especially in this August weather when it's humid as well. So we not only are looking at what's the rank order issues, but what's the physical implications of some of this increased activity. We still see obviously social behavior from uh, Aiden here. He's in a subordinate rollover with Luna rolling on his back, pawing up to her. Aiden still treats these two yearlings like they are pups. These yearlings, though, are acting more or less like wolves that are on the social ladder. They are climbing and looking for opportunities to move up in rank. Now, Luna, not so much because Luna is the only female, so she has that right, inherent right, to be dominant because she's the only one. As I said, tension can increase in a split second, and that's what we're seeing here just for a short period of time. Bolt started testing Aiden. Aiden's a very strong pack leader and he put an end to it very quickly. The biggest issue that we face is the timing between these one-year-olds turning into two-year-olds is really the most aggressive time. Things can escalate very quickly. The yearlings uh, are always looking for an opportunity to climb social rank. And once we get through this age of two into adulthood, that the wolves will maintain that order. And that was our experience with Shadow and Malik when Grizzer tested him between uh, the winter, uh, between Grizzer's first and second year. Shadow was a very strong pack leader, put Grizzer in his place, and from then on maintained the rank order uh, and uh, for six years uh, was the dominant pack leader. We expect the similar thing to happen for Aiden, as that Aiden is a strong pack leader. Aiden will clearly have some um, times when he is putting both Denali and Bolts into lower ranking posture. The question is going to be where do Bolts and Denali fit within that rank order as far as second and third ranking males. Over in Grizzer's enclosure we didn't get a lot of s footage this week. We were really busy um, moving around some uh, making a different vestibule configuration for him. Cleaning his pond. He chose to lick the bottom of his pond. Uh, lots of minerals and debris and who knows what's under there but got to clean uh clean his pond out and also uh, get a little excited about some of the construction work so marking territory was real important for him uh, but he's doing real well uh, also clean the retired pond that's uh something that we do kind of this late season season uh, we want to obviously keep these ponds going up until late september we need to clean out that algae that is inherent during those hot hot summer days now that we're into f moving into fall we shouldn't have as much algae growth, so we uh, take this opportunity now to clean them out. We also did a lot of burdock removal. Burdock is a plant that has kind of burrs on it as it, mature, as it matures. 
the wolves get these burrs stuck in their hair. So we're going to spend a lot more time here in the upcoming weeks pulling a lot of those plants. So we have again some more clips of shadow with a attempt at howling. But again, that older vocal cord just having a little bit of a hard time howling. Someone had inquired as to whether this was a paralysis issue with the vocal cords. And we don't believe it is. We, um, he has vocal cord capabilities. It's just not at that high pitch that he normally would howl at. He has no problem growling. He has no problem um, in a lower p uh, pitched howl. He has no problem in a bark display. In a lower pitched threat display is no problem. It's just these social rally howls that are usually high pitch that are very difficult for him to uh, try to try to reach that pitch. So again, it's hard to watch, but he is 13 and we you know, know that older wolves do have, have some issues. So we are happy to report though that the facial growth that he had a couple weeks ago is not advancing as quickly. It's back again. It's not advancing as quickly as we had, uh, had a witness in Lakota when she had those a few years ago but um, it is something that we're keeping an eye on and, and we certainly have dealt with it before so we know that we can we can solve that problem pretty easily but otherwise Shadow's extremely alert uh, you know for a 13 year old his hearing his eyesight he um, sensory abilities are all there and so I'll allow you to uh, say kind of listen in on what's well, not much for howling but at least you can maybe howl with them And then we have uh, a little bit of scraping. We know Shadow always been the dominant pack leader. You can see here, this is a frequent scraping spot. He has uh, dug down several inches into the soil. Showing status, he's still the leader of this pack. Even though his hull's not the greatest anymore, the pack still responds to him. And uh, otherwise, Luna's doing good. Long, tall legs, skinny little body, getting uh, some of that winter coat in. And I did want to, again, address you know, Denali's getting a little bit of more dominance because that male rank order does have some tension. Aided Bolts are, again, working it out. And as just reminiscent, we've been through this before. Grizzer, between the first and second year, was doing the same thing to Shadow. And Shadow, um, you know, was a, pa a strong pack leader then, as well as being a strong pack leader now. So we have been there before, and we'll keep you posted on any changes. But that's it for this week, and thanks for watching.